we will get this session started. So good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. As I know folks are joining from different time zones, the iLearn conference is international and we are just really pleased to have you here in our session. Up first is integrating emerging technologies into teaching, sharing tools and strategies for using gamification and simulations. And presenting tonight will be Robin, Nicole, Sherry, and Christine. Is that correct? Um, tonight it is um, myself, Robin, and Nicole. Okay, wonderful. Robin and Nicole will be presenting. And we really look forward to your talk. So the presentation is, it's your time to, to share. Great. Thank you very much, Paula. Yep. Okay, so um, today um, we're going to talk to you a little bit. Um, and just to start out to introduce us, I'm Robin Sullivan. I'm a teaching and learning strategist with the Link Center through the University at Buffalo Libraries. And my colleague Nicole will introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Nicole Simon. I'm a STEM professor, ed tech specialist, and instructional designer from Nassau Community College, which is part of SUNY State University of New York. Thank you. And um, the session we're going to talk about, um, we're going to focus a little bit on the Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success Project through the State University of New York system. And there is a website that goes with this project. Nicole, thanks for sticking it into the chat. Um, for the purpose of the recording, for anybody that might be listening, um, the URL is suny.edu slash mtech. That's S-U-N-Y dot E-D-U slash E-M-T-E-C-H. And um, we also have the slides available for this session. And again, the link is in the chat for you, or there's a QR code on the screen. And um, there'll be some uh, links that you can uh, frequent at a later point if you want. So Nicole, can you kind of get us started here? Sure. So when we think about emerging technologies, there's so many choices. It's ever growing, changing selection of new tools. There's a variation of both purpose and the quality of all of these emerging technologies. So how do we actually know which ones to choose and what's the most appropriate? Enter MTech. This is a discovery learning to explore and reflect on innovative and creative uses of emerging technologies. What our project is, it's a learning opportunity targeted to all learners, anyone who's interested in staying current with today's rapidly changing technologies, especially students and instructors. So it's geared mostly for instructors, but it's been used for professional development, for adult learners, and all the way down to high school students. And we're finding more middle school students can also benefit from this. So there's two parts to our project. The first is the MOOC. It's a Coursera MOOC that provides a supportive online learning opportunity. And this is where we house all of our information, our modules for teaching and learning and our assessments. And the MOOC focuses on the four C's of 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. The second part of our project is the MTech Wiki. This is a socially curated wiki repository of freely available and freemium tools and resources. And it's used in conjunction with the MTech MOOC to complete the assignments in the course. It's also an open website that's available as a standalone resource. And it's been used by myself and colleagues on my campus where we will use the wiki to bring in very limited portions of the module for different projects in our courses. So here's the um, uh, screen capture of the wiki. And um, so as Nicole mentioned, we have these two pieces. We have a Coursera-based course that kind of guides a user through some discovery-based activities. Those activities will have them come to the wiki and find a tool or a resource that meets their needs. So um, the course is in five different modules and they correspond to those four C's of uh, 21st century learners. 
And so we have over 600 resources in here right now, tools, tutorials, um, different types of resources. So if you come from module two, which is the communication and collaboration section, that selection of 600 resources starts to get narrowed down. And you can then narrow down even further. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a filter for objectives. So you can click on that and it will identify a couple of the objectives that line up to the different modules that you're in. For example, if you are trying to communicate with others, you can select that as an objective. Um, you also have a filter for categories. So if you know you're interested in the gamification piece or simulations, you can drill down to those sections. There's a bunch of other sections in there. You can see there's maybe about 20 of them. Um, audio, video, blogs, um, all about lifelong learning, um, productivity tools. In this uh, presentation, we'll focus and show you a few of the resources that are in the gamification and simulation section. Um, so as you come from the MOOC, you select something that meets your needs and you explore. Hopefully you will take the time to create an account and create something. Um, whether you create a crossword puzzle or an infographic or um, an escape room, whatever you create, we ask you to then put that into a um, e-portfolio or a personal learning journal. So as you go through the module, you actually build this website that has your portfolio, that has all these artifacts that you create using the tools that you uh, learn about through the wiki. And at the end of the course, um, in addition to some small multiple choice kind of case study like quiz questions, um, once you complete all that, you then have completed the course. So just to kind of summarize that for you, you go through the course and participate and view the course materials. You then explore the wiki tools and resources to complete the exercises. You then share an artifact in your portfolio and add just a couple paragraphs. What did you learn throughout that process? And would you do something different? Would you use that tool? Is it useful for your needs? And finally, at the end, you can earn a SUNY digital badge and a Coursera certificate. Um, why do you want to bother doing anything in this course? What are the rewards? What's in it for you? So a couple things that you'll get is um, a personal e-portfolio. You can build on that throughout your life. We encourage, lifelong learning is kind of the most important module of the course. So we encourage you to keep building on that portfolio. You'll also, if you choose, um, you can also earn the certificate and the digital badges. There is a small fee for that extra bonus. Um, if you choose to take the whole course for free, you can do that. When you get to the end, you could just take a picture of the congratulations, you completed the course screen. That can be your certificate. But if you want one of the official Coursera certificates and a SUNY badge, you do have to pay a small registration fee. Um, but the biggest reward, we hope that you would gain intrinsic rewards of being a lifelong learner. So um, just to share a few resources, we have um, over 600 in the wiki now. So we can't talk to, uh, about a lot of them, but I do want to introduce just a few. Um, and um, Nicole, you've actually used uh, Kahoot with your students. Um, do you want to introduce that one? Sure, Kahoot is a, what I call a freemium. You have Freebase and then you have Freemium if you want to upgrade for a couple of the whistles and bells on a lot of our tech tools. And we want to make sure that they are low to free cost for educators and for students. Kahoot is an awesome game. It's super easy to use where you can either use pre-made games or you can create your own for your classes. I've used them for review and tutorial. I've had my students make them. It's really a lot of fun to gamify learning and to just make things a little bit more interactive with students. I think over the past couple of years, making sure that you have that interactivity, especially when we're in a more remote or Zoom world, is so important for students. But just for the intrinsic learning and, and having students have fun when they're learning is, is so much a, a better enjoyment for them. Great, thank you. And um, another resource that I wanna share through the gamification section is LinkLock. It's a really simple tool. And it can be used in something like a gamification uh, scenario when you're using maybe an escape room or other um, 
quizzes, activities that you want to lock a different web page down. You can set a password for a, for a website that unless the student or the learner, or whoever, gets the correct password, they're locked out. They can't go any further. So it's just a very simple resource, just an example of some of the, cre the different spectrum of tools that we'll share through the wiki. StudyMate is a nice tool that will allow you to create um, quiz questions that are, um, you know, kind of dynamic in addition to some puzzles like crossword puzzles, um, fill in the blank, uh, flashcards, etc. cetera. Um, yes, um, Kahoot is a, is a blast. Students definitely love it. Um, and Nicole, you also use the FET simulations in your class. Can you talk about that one? Absolutely. FET is from a uh, National Science Foundation grant through the University of Colorado, and it's geared towards the STEM areas. And you have anything from middle school up through high school. It can actually be used for higher ed as well, where you have wonderful simulations on various different science and math topics. You can either use by creating an account, some of the pre-made tutorials, quizzes, or labs that come with that, or you can actually create your own. They're very easy. I've designed my own by just using screenshots and it's wonderful. Students can use it web-based. They don't have to download. If they want, they can. You can share out some of your resources. It's great with clickers. It's great with other apps or the QR codes or just use it as a standalone. I use it in my class where we use it as a springboard to introduce a topic, to be able to have students learn about it. And being in a remote environment, it's so important because the students don't have the hands-on lab experience to be able to say, okay, well, again, we've gamified the learning, but more importantly, they can see those properties that they wouldn't necessarily have in class. Okay, thanks. Um, and in addition to um, you know, the tutorials, there's also just some resources. The game-based learning cookbook has a number of ideas of how you can use game in your class, in a classroom. Um, lesson plans and other ideas. Um, so th the numbers you see on the screen, we have, uh, I just was happy today when I was creating this presentation for a while, it's been, we have 500 plus resources. Well, we just made it over the 600 net mark. So now I can say 600 plus. <laughs> um, hopefully, you know, if all of you add one or two resources, we can go up to 700 plus. But anyhow, that's another session. Um, so in gamification, we have 68 resources right now that, um, that have been classified in the gamification section. Some of them do overlap. So you might find um, you know, the FET sim simulations. Some of them are gamification, but actually I'm looking at my selection now. That probably would have fit better in the second section when we talk about simulations. That one's in both. Um, so for simulation, we have 73. And that's Bad since um you know that's one of the newer sections I think in the wiki that we did not have originally we've had it for a long time but not originally and um the resources are now fast and furious uh, piling up quicker than we can get them added so um there's um a, that link on this screen if you do download the slides there is a collection of generative AI resources that would all make a great record unto themselves. Um, but just for the sake of time, I was only able to put in the library so far. Um, but it, you know, as we mentioned, it is a wiki. So we will talk to you soon about how you can hopefully add to that wiki. Um, under simulation, one of the other great tools we have is a selection of some of the um, PC Magazine's best LiDAR apps. So if you have um, one of the devices right now, I think it's just the later iOS devices. I don't know if that's come to um, Android natively yet, but you can get add-on equipment to take a phone or a tablet and take photographs of a three-dimensional object. And then it would produce a three-dimensional recreation, whether it's um, of a space or an object. And um, in at the University at Buffalo, we recently captured a lot of artifacts from our history of medicine collection. So they had some paper mache anatomy figures that were very old and don't want anybody touching them um, any longer because they're very fragile. So we're able to now um, take 3D images of them and now people can go to our library website and manipulate them, look them over from all different angles and study them. 
as if they were in the museum. Um, <clears throat> another one of the great uh, tools under simulation is Genially. And that can create some uh, interactive scenario-based lessons, um, adding interactivity. Um, you know, a lot of it uh, does revolve around quizzing and polling. Um, Matterport is a very nice tool to create uh, digital twins and vi virtual tours, being able to walk around uh, three-dimensional space. Um, I've been trying to look at some of those different tools and um, just trying to figure out what is the best tool for um, specific needs. The tools, by the time you figure out which one you want to use, that one goes out of business or changes their pricing scheme and you have to select something else. So um, there is a rating system on the wiki. So we are hoping that... Um, you know, people, when they visit, you don't even need to create an account. You can just visit the records page, click the up arrow, and hopefully that crowdsourced um, information will help everybody determine what are the better tools. Uh, one more resource that I'll highlight and then we'll move on is uh, the National Geographic has a great collection of VR and 360 um, exhibits through their website. So, um, you know, they can, uh, you know, they can, you know, simulate all kinds of spaces and, and activities. Um, and Polycam, yeah, that is a very good tool as well. Um, somebody at a conference recently um, did a, a full scan of me. So now I have a three-dimensional me that I can turn around and pick up. And I was at the conference. And actually during the one of the Buffalo blizzards, um, and I sent myself in augmented reality to my husband in the kitchen. So that was really kind of cool. <laughs> it, was, it was very interesting. Um, so th that's just uh, some examples um, from the, the project. And um, we have some e-portfolios. Nicole, you wanna talk about those real quick? Sure, we encourage everybody who takes the MOOC to create an e-portfolio or a learner record, <coughs> excuse me, a learning journal that explains their journey, what they've learned. It is very simple to do when you're creating e-portfolios. We encourage everybody to go through each of the different modules and customize it. What works for you, whether you're doing professional, whether you're doing it for your classes or whether you're doing a little bit more fun. I have several different and so does Robin, depending upon what our moods are and what we're creating it. So you can see we have a couple of different examples of those e-portfolios and being able to share them out is so super important. Where are we sharing them out? This is where we get back to the MTech project. Great, thank you. So it is a wiki and um, we would encourage you all to go to the site, go to the contribute menu and create an account. Please add something um, that we don't have yet in the collection. Um, we've had over 34,000 individuals from across the world participate. Um, lots of numbers. I think the Coursera uh, branding does pull that in quite a bit. So that's um, really nice. The um, circles are kind of represent a little bit of the um, you know frequency of who's been visiting. If you wanna see some of the impact, we've been collecting data on this process for about 10 years. So you can go to that uh, bit.ly dot, uh, slash mtech dash impact and see some of the information there. We do want to also share, so I'm going to um, have Nicole share the slide link in the chat again. So you can get here. We have announcements that you can just pick up and ma mail out to people, um, social media messages, this one minute video. Um, they can all be shared. Please share widely. And we need, um, we need your help. We would love to have you share info about MTech. We would love to have you contribute tools and resources. Um, under the um, FAQ page or under the, um, uh, the call for partnerships page, there's information about how you can become a fellow. We would love it to have a big community of learners who share and support each other. We would love some uh, researchers. And most of all, we need some grant writers to keep this project sustained. So I know we're getting to the end of our minutes there. So Nicole and I wanna thank you very much for your attention. And I don't know how much we say for questions. I think we kind of kept talking too much. <laughs>
Thank you so much for this presentation. If there are questions, uh, please put them in the chat. And that would be great because th then I won't miss you. Um, so, but I just want to ask, what's your motivation for starting this? Like, it's a really big undertaking. And I must say, like, I will be contacting you Thank because you. I have been using LinkedIn Learning, which is excellent with my students. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. my university is no longer paying the subscri subscription fee. So in the fall term, I will not be able to use it. And I love the idea of my students um, doing the MOOC and then contributing a resource. We use many of the tools that you've mentioned. Genially is a favorite tool. And you know, students do those assignments and then they share them with each other. But I love the idea of for those that want to share it on the wiki and um, so I, I'm very grateful you started this. It actually fits in quite well with some of the courses that I teach. But, right. but so, it's a huge project. So how did you even get it started? Um, well, to um, uh, I had come up with this, uh, or the model was in place on the internet through a goal setting up community. And I applied that when I taught a graduate level hybrid course. The students really love the kind of uh, very autonomous, self-directed nature of learning. And um, I presented at a conference and the faculty at the conference said, this would be great for professional development. So I was at uh, R1 University, one central instructional designer to thousands of faculty. So the idea of reaching out to scale was needed. And that was the original um, idea that drove this project and now, um, getting other faculty throughout the SUNY system to assist. Nicole has been a phenomenal partner and uh, she's been on sabbatical trying to help us. Um, and she's going to actually be kind of taking the lead and continuing the project from here. So yeah, it's a great resource and we're just passionate about having people learn using the technologies, taking the best advantage, knowing what to use at the most appropriate time and, and why or when to use it. Thank you. I can see the passion and the quality of the resource. And I like that there's option that, um, you know, students can, can contribute and learn for free. Like that's another important pathway because all the paywalls end up, uh, you know, becoming a hurdle to learning. So it's, uh, it's interesting there. And then I like that it is, um, in encourages diverse people to share too so because it's yeah. that diversity is where you get um just you get brilliant ideas and exactly and yeah from all over the world you get to learn together with people and and understand you know somebody that is maybe a student learning side by side with the faculty learning side by side with an engineer in some other part of the world it's it's fascinating just to listen to the conversations. Yeah, that's wonderful. So just a reminder, Nicole has put a link in the chat to the slides. So if you want to download a copy of the slides, please do so and check out this resource integrated into your teaching. It just looks phenomenal. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to dig around a little bit more and and uh and see like i said i'll i'll be contacting you because it looks like a really good thank you and next up we have another nicole nicole lamaru and kristen muscalek and we nicole kristen and i we wrote two papers for the practitioner proceedings one is Truth with Hope, Teaching the SDGs Through Immersive Learning. And the other paper is Diving into SDG 14, The Life Below Water, a VR experience for deeper understanding. So Kristen and Nicole are going to take the lead in presenting tonight. And you will learn about the SDGs and immersive learning and I will turn things over to Kristen and Nicole. Thanks, Paula. I'm just going to share my screen here before I start. 
All right. So hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks, for, uh, Robin and Nicole, for your presentation. That was all very interesting. And I, as Paula said, am looking forward to checking out um, your resource. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone here. And I would like to start off by um, doing some land acknowledgments of our areas. So as we gather here today, we acknowledge we are on Treaty, Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. Um, additionally, uh, additionally I, would, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional territories and oral practices of the Blackfoot nations, which include the Siksika, the the Pikani and the Kainai. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the Tusina and Stony Nakota First Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all of the people who make their home in Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Thanks, Nicole. All right, so before we introduce ourselves fully here, we'd like to start our presentation off with just a little bit of teacher humor. So we hope you enjoy this intro. Do your students look like this? Bored, sleepy, unmotivated, frustrated? Do you think to yourself, there must be a better way? Well, lucky for you, there is Introducing Virtual Reality for Education. With VR, your boring textbooks can transform into captivating virtual worlds where learning becomes an adventure. Your students' enthusiasm for learning will skyrocket. But that's not all. With VR, you can travel anywhere from outer space to the deep sea, all from the comfort of your classroom. So try VR now. Only three easy payments of priceless learning. Some conditions apply. Side effects may include engaged learners, motivated students, knowledge retention, and more. All right, so we hope that got a little bit of a chuckle out of you to start. Uh, hello, my name is Kristen Miskalik. I'm a teacher turned instructional designer here at the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon, Canada. How many of you, if you're teachers or, or not, how many of you have seen this or felt this way or before? Students who are unmotivated, unfocused, and not interested in the content that's right in front of them. We've both been there. And so that's what inspired Nicole and I to develop our project, Diving Deep into SDG 14, Life Below Water, a VR experience for deeper understanding. We're really excited to share this project with you tonight, along with some other practical information. So I'll give Nicole an opportunity to properly introduce herself, and then we'll hop right into things. Nicole? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Nicole Lamru, and I'm a high school teacher in Calgary, Alberta. Um, I've recently graduated from the University of Saskatchewan with my Master's of Education, uh, majoring in Educational Technology and Design. Uh, we would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for attending our session tonight and um, checking out our Frame VR immersive projects connected to the United Nations Sustainability goals, number 14, life below water, and number 15, life on land. Um, so to start off, we would really like everyone to get out their cell phones, if you have one, um, and scan this QR code. We just wanted to do a quick interactive poll um, to see everybody's level of what the sustainability goals are. So if you would take the time to answer our quick poll, that would be fabulous.
Okay, awesome. So happy to see so many people have heard of the SDGs. Uh, we've got some with solid background, some with basic knowledge, and it doesn't look like we have any that are completely green. So that that will help with our presentation tonight. So thank you for taking the time to um, interact with us. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get into our project soon. Um, but what we wanted to start with first is we wanted to begin with what we, we believe the six design principles that are most effective to guide educators and students in designing immersive learning environments to teach the sustainable development goals. Um, so we believe that integrating micro learning by integrating micro learning, students are able to master the learning objectives in a variety of ways that best suit their individual learning needs. For example, students can construct knowledge around the SDGs through interactive polls, Padlet brainstorming, TikToks, YouTube videos, images, infographics, audio lessons, PDF documents, personal stories, and learning games. Uh, micro content is also so familiar to students um, and they use it in almost everything they do outside of the classroom. So we figured why not introduce it to the classroom in a curated way. Uh, this ensures the content they are viewing is reliable um, and knowledge rich. Um, by adding in gamification, uh, student motivation increases, allowing learners to stay focused and curious to move through the content and required tasks. Gamification can help prepare students to respond quickly to challenges and think creatively and optimistically about how we can achieve the sustainable development goals. Empowering students as creators and innovators encourages students to showcase their abilities and skills in fresh and innovative ways. By providing learners with design challenges that are feasible and have clearly defined criteria, students can generate revolutionary and unforeseen ideas and solutions all while building lasting understanding through the process of spatial awareness when building within the platform. Um, it is important to value collaboration and social learning by leveraging the spatial design benefits. Immersive learning environments can have the potential to increase co-presence and foster personal connections among students globally. Um, this can be used to cultivate a sense of community within your classroom um, where students can develop trusting relationships and build the creative confidence necessary to pursue new learning goals. Um, within our immersive environment, when challenging students to be sustainability problem finders and problem solvers, you're asking them to be real world problem solvers for the sustainable development goals. Um, students are given an opportunity to investigate very complex sustainability issues, ask critical questions and put forward solutions from their imaginations and optimistic spirits, building empathy for our planet. Um, we decided within our learning environment to design a learning journal that aligns with our immersive platform. By using a learning journal, the journey is scaffolded, which provides students with purpose and time to reflect and document their knowledge and growth. The companion learning journal is connected to the immersive environment including formative and summative assessment activities where teachers can assess mastery of learning objectives based on each student's knowledge, skills, and attitudes surrounding the SDGs. All right. So now there's still a variety of challenges to overcome regarding teaching the SDGs through immersive learning. These challenges include limited resources such as headsets and the capacity of educational systems, a lack of professional development. This can include professional development for teachers regarding the SDGs as well as um, professional development on VR and VR platforms. Um, this work is complex. So there's not only, or not only is it a form of of teaching that is complex in its development and delivery, but it's also daunting content um, that can make the design of curriculum complex as well. 
Uh, it can be hard to connect the SDGs into an overprescribed curriculum. So teaching about the SDGs is so important, but teachers have enough on their plates. So piling one more thing onto their onto their to do list um, is not the way to go about educating about SDGs. So it takes time to connect the SDGs to already made curriculum. Uh, there can be interference from government or community stakeholders. And finally, there needs to be assessment tools to measure the learning outcomes. So to address some of these challenges, we would like to take a look at two case studies um, that examine the affordances and constraints of teaching the SDGs through immersive learning. Uh, but before we uh, get into those case studies, we'd like to hear from you again. So if you can pull out your, your phones, we have another uh, quick poll or word cloud, I guess, that we would like uh, you to answer. All right, so lots of people have used VR, some for engagement. I know personally I can't answer the poll right now, but I have attempted to use it in the classroom as well as with work. Some have used it for authenticity. We'll give just a little bit more time. Some experiential learning simulation, awesome. All right, I'm going to close the poll and we're going to move on. All right, so I'm going to speak about our project first, diving deep into SDG 14, Life Below Water. This project was developed with our students in mind. So our students come from Alberta and Saskatchewan, Canada, and have had little to no exposure to the oceans of the world. So our hope was by developing a learning opportunity within VR, that we'd be able to transport our students to a location they've never been in order to raise awareness and empathy towards SDG 14, and to provide memorable quality learning opportunities. We wanted this project to connect to the curriculum of our regions so that teachers could easily justify and integrate SDG learning. So therefore, we researched our province's curriculum documents to find connections in many subject areas, such as English, science, and social studies. Through our process, we identified and utilized the six design principles that Nicole mentioned previously. So now I'm going to play a short clip that explains some of the de design decisions behind our project. Sorry. Technical difficulties. According to a study by Garduno, students expressed that using virtual reality to learn high school science curriculum was favorable, showing 72% positive for attention and 71% positive for satisfaction. Additionally, VR can extend students' perceptions and presence outside of the classroom to areas of the world where field trips and experiences often are not reachable in specific settings. Learning in an immersive environment can provide a meaningful opportunity for students in the prairies to explore, collaborate, and make connections about our oceans and waterways. The Frame VR space places students in an environment far removed from their prairie setting to take a first-hand look at the human impacts on oceans and the threats they face. 
Our metaverse was split into three different settings, each with a different objective. The main island is an interactive area where multiple students can meet and collaborate. The island houses the majority of the learning information. This information is presented in the form of micro content to keep students engaged and to reduce cognitive load. From the main island, students can be transported to two different settings. The gallery, which is a single view area, meaning students are always alone, and the future. The gallery provides students with a quiet place to take in additional information, explore 3D models, and reflect on their learning. The future gives students the opportunity to choose their fate and see how their choices surrounding SDG 14 may impact the real world. To promote engagement and motivation, we incorporated various technical elements. We utilized gamification in the form of scavenger hunts to motivate students to explore all areas of the island, thus in turn interacting with all of the curated information provided. These scavenger hunts provided students with a fun side quest that complemented the learning. We also encouraged student engagement through the integration of Padlet and the addition of polls. Padlet facilitated opportunities for the learners to reflect on their learning and participate in discussions. Polls allowed a quick and easy way for learners to state their opinions and see how their opinion stood against the rest of the class. Finally, a technical element not visible within the metaverse is our learning journal. The learning journal helped to scaffold the learner's journey, providing purpose each time they entered the metaverse. It brought all the information together and allowed students to share their thoughts and knowledge on SDG 14. Whoops. We would now like to take a look at an example of a student designed and created virtual reality world connected to SDG 15 Life on Land. The students focused on the specific learning targets to teach about deforestation and its impacts on our planet by utilizing frame VR to create an immersive environment. This second case study is an example of a way to empower students as creative designers in building and designing content connected to SDG 15, Life on Land. In a grade eight class, 28 students were invited to be co-researchers in a study called Youth Mobilizing Action on Sustainability Using Digital Tools and Storytelling. The methods for data collection included artifact analysis, observations, survey, and semi-structured interviews. The study builds on research that examines how immersive learning experiences can be a meaningful and affordable solution for visualizing issues like climate breakdown and increase empathy for conservation efforts. The co-researchers visited the University of Saskatchewan to participate in a two-day workshop on designing in virtual reality. Using the MetaQuest head mounted displays, the co-researchers collaborated to co-create art with their peers in multi-brush VR. Research activities involved guided exploration of environmental and sustainability issues in alt space VR worlds. The class worked together to co-create and design an educational and interactive micro content gallery in frame VR to teach their friends and family about deforestation. Today's youth are concerned about whether there is enough action on the SDGs by the government and political movements. Although the SDGs are global priorities, they are challenging to teach in traditional classrooms, such that students understand the connections between their actions and the consequences on our people and planet. This exploratory case study contributes novel pedagogical approaches for SDG education, integrating immersive storytelling and authentic learning experiences co-created by youth. The co-researchers gained a deep understanding of themselves as designers, world builders, and responsible citizens. Both case studies show an exciting new way to integrate immersive learning into existing curricula. I hope that the use of technology in meaningful ways to empower and motivate students to get involved with local efforts for achieving a more equitable and sustainable world can begin to accelerate progress towards reaching the SDGs and mobilizing youth voices on issues concerning their lives and future. 
Excellent. So I was reading in the chat and I saw that some people were excited about the project and they would love to have access and potentially use it with some of their students. That's uh, we appreciate that. That's very cool. Um, we would also love to add that into the wiki collection. That's excellent. Um, so what we would like to do now is hear from the audience. Um, we want you to interact with our Padlet. Um, and and youth voices on issues concerning their lives and future. So sorry. We would love for you to interact on this Padlet. Um, we have the links on the Padlet um, for both to access both of the um, platforms for SDG 14 and SDG 15, the ones the students created. Um, so we were kind of hoping to kind of create a little bit of a living wall where people would have access. Um, and so this will also put the, the link will be in there a little bit later. Um, but we were hoping that we were able to potentially add resources, um, potentially comment on things, um, maybe have images, ideas or resources to help support this collaborative space so we can learn from each other and I mean, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Let's work together and make it better. Um, so if you would like to take a minute and scan the QR code, um, if you have anything, comments, questions, um, anything you'd like to add, we would love that on a living wall to access. So we'll just give everybody a little bit of time here. And I apologize to everyone for uh, skipping over the QR code. It was a little difficult to get back there, so. I have a comment for you. And as you brought up the challenges of integrating into very overprescribed curriculum, there was a session today by Knox Grammar Prep School in Australia, and it is really inspiring what they have done with their curriculum. So in Australia, I imagine that they have a similar curriculum to Canada arranged around the traditional subjects, but at their school, they got all the teachers together and they did a Google sprint. And instead of having all the canned subjects, they reorganized the curriculum into five inquiry areas. And they are stories of the world and its people, interconnected systems, sustainable solutions, tinkering towards tomorrow, global change makers. And so they integrated all of the subjects within those five inquiry areas. And so this is for kindergarten to grade six. And yeah, I'm jealous. Isn't that just phenomenal that they've been able to do that? And then their students have all that time to, like they just won a world uh, robotics competition and they're present the students are presenting at ISTE they presented here like it just shows that you know that interdisciplinary kind of approach that really allows teachers to do that kind of work with their students would just be a remarkable thing compared to doing the wonderful work that um, you've done in Frame VR, and then I just juxtapose that with like trying to shoehorn it into the curriculum in both Saskatchewan and Alberta. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so I, I think that um, with the QR code, and I think, I mean, we would still like to continue um, on with the presentation. Um, so we can leave this up. We can post a link later in the chat to the Padlet where we all have access as well. Um, but I'm gonna move on to the next big idea that we're quite excited about. Um, so with this project, um, Kristen and I, obviously we believe that both of these projects are leading by example for innovative work. Um, to engage and motivate learners through guided learning or co-creation of content surrounding the SDGs. Um, so we're hopeful that we're inspiring younger generations in developing a passion for their world and continue to be curious and search for sustainable solutions um, in an ever-evolving world. Um, 
So we are very, very, very excited. Um, our immersive platform for life underwater um, was entered into a global competition called the Metaverse for SDGs Global Prize and Virtual Reality Competition. Um, and this competition was put on by Exponential Destiny, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, the main goal of, our, of this competition was to utilize virtual reality platforms to build knowledge, empathy, and awareness for the sustainable development goals. Um, so obviously, Life Below Water connects to everyone around the world. Um, and so our project has actually made it as a contender to be a finalist in the competition. And earlier this month, we were asked to virtually present at the United Nations headquarters in New York. Um, so we were able to demonstrate our platform to UN delegates during the eighth multi-stakeholder forum on science, technology, and innovation for the sustainable development goals. Um, and later this summer, we will find out if we are winners of the competition. And if we are winners, luckily, we would then be flown to New York and presented with a prize at the United Nations headquarters. So we are obviously very blessed and excited to be involved in this opportunity. Um, and really the opportunity to us is, is mostly to ignite change and instill enthusiasm in our students learning through virtual reality. Yeah. All right, so that is the end of our presentation. Um, in conclusion, I guess, I think it's fairly obvious that Nicole and I can see the value that virtual reality has for students in creating impactful learning opportunities. And we're really excited to share our work with you and hopefully inspire some of you to maybe bring this kind of technology into your classrooms. So thank you for taking the time to connect with us this evening. And we'd now like to open the floor for any questions or comments that you may have. It's a very inspiring presentation. And I love how you started off with the teacher humor. There's also some teacher humor in the Frame VR world. So you will all have to go in there and explore it. So Kristen and Nicole are just very gifted and um, very gifted and very talented. As I can see in the chat, we have lots of congratulations on this a great project, excellent project, awesome, phenomenal, really nice work, phenomenal. Um, you know, make a great addition to the uh, Sunny Wiki. So yeah, I agree. It's uh, that's how we get it, ideas and inspire each other, and that's how more teachers will decide to create these kind of resources and create them with their students and let them be creators as well. So we've seen lots of pedagogical excellence and um, and very meaningful immersive lear learning design, I will say, especially with the integration of the learning journal and other instructional design principles that that I know you spent hours and hours just thinking about and deliberating. And when you see when you see an end work or a world that that someone has created, unless if you created worlds, you know, you can't really appreciate all the thinking and the thought and the planning that goes into it. And so I really appreciate the, the work you've done. And yeah, and I hope you get to go to New York. So that would just <laughs> carry on top. But also congrats just for, you know, being a finalist and making it that far in the competition. That is also an honor to uh, to to be selected. So it is celebrate all the wins along the way. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know I have in the chat put the links to both Frame VR Worlds. You're more than welcome to please go and check them out. Um, just note, um, both of the worlds do have a capacity limit at the moment. Um, and so you're welcome to go in and out as much as you would like. Um, and some you can go in as a spectator for one of them and the other one you're able to have up to 10 pe eight people at a time within the world. Um, so just keep that in mind when you are checking them out. Yeah, and I think just uh, finally to end off the night, um, Nicole's going to pop a link in to the chat for a 
a really quick feedback form. So Nicole and I are both fairly new to presenting to um, people like yourselves and on a platform like this. So we'd really appreciate your feedback if you could take a couple seconds to fill that out. But otherwise, thank you all for listening and we hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much for this excellent and, and interactive presentation. Next up is Nikem, and Nikem is also from, well, from the University of Saskatchewan, where she's studying, but um, Nikem, you have a, you have a PhD in what area? Entomology, insect okay. science, yeah. Okay, and, and is a lifelong learner, so is also, um, you know, now coming back for more as, as a grad student at, at our university. And I'm really pleased that she is here tonight to share about some research that she's done around enhancing online graduate education experience using immersive learning environments. And I will turn things over to you, Nikam, and we're really looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much, Paula. Thank you for having me. And I've actually recorded my presentation, so I will share that. My name is Patricia Nkemukuri. Thank you. My presentation is on enhancing online graduate education experience using immersive learning environments. The COVID-19 pandemic led to a dramatic shift to online learning. Online education offers graduate students a lot of advantages. Personally, I have benefited from that because it has afforded me the opportunity to study from a distance. However, online learning has a lot of challenges that it faces. This study focuses on how online graduate education experience can be enhanced using immersive learning environments. Enhancing online graduate education begins with the instructional design approach needed. This design recognizes the same skill set used for 2D design. I will therefore ground this presentation in the ADI model. The analysis phase of the ADI model determines whether the immersive learning environment will succeed or whether it will fail. The design phase has a huge effect on the effectiveness of the user experience. Irrespective of the platform used to develop the immersive learning environment, the design strategy should be based on real world problems and involve authentic practice opportunities. Important considerations in the development phase include the learning goal as well as the added value of using immersive learning environments. Implementing immersive learning requires careful planning of the teaching sequence, as well as aligning the learning objectives, the activities, and performance assessments while focusing on the learner. It could require a paradigm shift for even students who are used to playing video or mobile games, because the consequences in this case is the academic success. Evaluation of immersive learning environments can be achieved by evaluating the learning environment itself or by evaluating how it has improved student performance. For this reason, it's important to collect the necessary data that will actually guide this evaluation. This presentation positions two main uses of immersive learning environments in online graduate education. First is how they could be used to enhance teaching and learning process. And secondly, how they can help improve the experience of the graduate students. AR and VR are used within immersive learning environments to increase the sense of social presence. It can be integrated into online classrooms using interactive interfaces. Immersive learning environments can be used to increase collaboration within students, whether they are meeting synchronously or asynchronously. Several VR tools and AR applications are available that support collaboration, problem solving, 
and provide remote guidance in online learning environments. VR can be used in online graduate education to improve student engagement, focus, and self-efficacy, thereby delivering a richer learning experience. VR simulations can be used for students to learn practical skills in a risk-free zone. AR, be it in the form of books or apps, can be used to make the content more attractive and motivating, and this can increase student autonomy engagement and attention compared to traditional notes and videos. They can also be implemented in an e-learning system to increase student engagement and reduce dropout rates. AR and VR tools provide students the ability to gain deeper understanding of abstract or complex subjects. AR offers students the opportunity to access information that is presented using two-dimensional methods. And this combination of interactivity and engagement could enhance the student's ability to remember what they have learned, and it could lead to a faster acquisition of information and skills. For example, using a 3D virtual reality platform improved student success in the study of craniofacial trauma education, the authors reported that 82% of the students spotted lesions using VR that they had missed unusual 3D renderings. So what are some use cases for immersive learning in online graduate education? The first case that I will share is for addressing social interaction and increasing collaboration using Zoom alternatives. In this case, through the use of GADA, this was obtained from Dr. Paula. It's one of the ETAD classes that I took at the University of Saskatchewan. On this platform, it was possible for all the students in this class to meet and interact even while we were all in different places. Platforms like this offer several advantages because students are able to get help from other students or the instructor, and it afforded the students the opportunity to network and meet up. Another use case is using platforms such as FrameVR for presentation of learning, which often occurs in graduate classes. Using platforms like this can help students feel connected and increase social interaction. The third use case is the use of avatars, which can help promote a feeling of community by providing students the opportunity to make connections with each other. Avatars can be used in discussion groups, debates, collaborative learning groups, and so on. The fourth use case is around improving the graduate student experience in general. For example, the Manchester Metropolitan University used AR instead of printed materials to advertise its programs and this led to an innovative, interactive, and immersive learning experience for students. Similarly, Western New England University used virtual reality for its admission event. And again, this was a way of making it more immersive for the students and engaging. In conclusion, immersive learning environment has its own challenges, including the rapid change of technology, the cost, and so on. However, immersive learning environments can improve the experience of graduate students in general, and they can be used to enhance the teaching and learning process. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil, for for your research. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'll now wait for your comments and discussions. Comments. A lot of comments. I like you included the Gather Town as a case study, and this aligns with what Erica Southgate was talking about in her keynote. If you happen to catch it, if you didn't, it will be on the iLearn YouTube channel, and I really do encourage you to watch it and then watch it again. She really is a, 
a thought leader and um, her talk is full of words of wisdom. But she, she says, don't be a VR snob. So don't assume that for meaningful, immersive learning, you need expensive headsets and really well-designed, expensive, you know, simulations. Um, Gather Town is really like Lego. It's everything is on a grid. It's, it's, you really can't get much more simple. I had my son who was 10 years old at the time to help me build some of the environments because he just really it is like lego it's all built on a grid and it is a powerful tool for building relationships and community because everybody gathers together and you're like a retro 80s game avatar and you can go into these areas and play games and you can um you make music and, but it's just like you can actually be interactive. And as Nikan was talking, this is in an online grad program or an online learning. So where students are not meeting together face to face. So looking at what are the affordances of immersive learning tools for, for building relationships, community, and for, um, you know, some, some of the outcomes of learning that are, are enviable and that uh, they're the goals that we see in our classrooms, whether it's in K to 12 or higher ed. And you did a good job of integrating in different different tools. But like I said, um, from Erica's talk, just, you know, don't assume it has to be expensive to be effective. So I like her point there. She says, don't be a VR snob. <laughs> well put. Thank you for that. Yeah, and I think also just building on Erica's talk, which uh, which I quite enjoyed, she also said, she reminded us, all us in the audience as her guests, that we have many um, instructional design frameworks and models to build on for immersive learning. So we are very fortunate, you know, we're not starting from you know, blank frameworks. We have pedagogical frameworks and instructional design frameworks. Like we really do have a lot of knowledge to build on. And at the beginning of your slide, you're talking about the Addy model and some other frameworks that are very um, well-defined frameworks that we can use and integrate. So I think that aligned nicely with uh, the message in Erica's keynote. Yeah, no, thank you for that. and. I know when I was doing the research, like um, what, because I'm new to VR, AR, and all of them, and it was fascinating to see that it's the same skill sets that you use for your normal instructional design that you would need for this. And one of the things that stuck to me was that it was not using the immersive learning for the fun of it. And I think one of the speakers today said something regarding that, like it's, it should be just a tool and not used for the fun of it. So I agree with that. Yes, so it's a tool and should be used intentionally with a purpose. So I would, I would agree with that. But something also Erica talked about is, I listen quite closely as you can tell, she said, she challenged us to think about um, she didn't call it authenticity, but she, replicas. So to be careful about not just replicating the traditional classroom in immersive learning settings, to really think about, do we need to replicate that or do we need to use our imagination? And Kristen and Nicole gave us an amazing example of like, what, a, yeah, I'm seeing Kelly's got her hands going there. I agree of like, just, you know, use your imagination and what kind of learning environment can we create? And that's not like how we learn sitting, sitting in desk in the classroom. So the, um, you know, that, but still being intentional, but inviting in play and inviting, taking some creative risks and, you know, some of that for the fun of it, where it's that elements of play, and even in adult education, we don't do enough play. So I would say, you know, we do need some of that, like in Gather Town, some of it was just for the fun of exploring and doing something together, but that was the intent. So, yeah. 
Wonderful. And yeah, and we've got some some nice comments in the in the chat. And uh, David's looking to to connect with you, so you can connect with him. And yeah, there's a Kristen has a good comment about using AR more. So lots of lots of potential and lots of potential uh, to create AR. So for about four years, I had all my students creating AR projects as part of their learning and AR projects on things that were challenging for me to teach, like course terms, like what is design thinking and what is artificial intelligence and so so everybody had to create an AR example with a story showing what it was and it uh yeah I think I have to bring back that assignment because it it worked uh the tools worked quite well so so thank you appreciate your time and if there's no other questions then we're going to move on to the next session and the next session is Metaverse Biomes for TESOL towards a new immersive framework. And we have Helena Galani, Heike Hulk, Amani, Amani, I'm not sure if pronounce your last name, Al Kayat, and Doris Malaro. Um, we really welcome you here tonight. And I will invite you to share your presentation with us. Hello, thank you, Paula. Thank you for the welcoming uh, words and also for accommodating for our presentation. It's great honor to be with you and uh, to be surrounded by like-minded people from what I hear. Um, I really like the conclusions you drew from the previous uh, presentation. And I may start if you think you're ready. Am I uh, on time or am I going to be a bit earlier? You can so, get started. Yeah, I think it will be fine. Okay, thank you. Well, let me share my screen then. And um, as Paula said, this is um, um, Metaverse Biomes for TESOL towards a new immersive framework. And this is going to be a presentation by me, Helena Galani, Heike Philp, Amani Alkayat, and Doris Molero. We've been working together uh, for quite a while now. We're a very nice team, and we have we're here to um, share our conclusions with you about using the metaverse to teach English uh, to speakers of other languages. And each one of us is going to present a different perspective. I'm an educator of TESOL in Greece, immersive uh, educator and tutor. Also, I'm, uh, I work as an ESOL assessor for examination bodies here in Greece. And um, I'll be glad to share my uh, conclusions, my findings about using the metaverse in my classroom, but also through my experience moderating for Evo Village um, 2023. So we're going to focus on methodologies involved for language teaching in different destinations in the metaverse. And um, that's going to include virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and all those immersive features, um, multi-sensory interactions and integrated technologies that you can find on the metaverse, we're going to show us how we have developed our own framework, educational framework in the metaverse. And um, first of all, this is the flow of the presentation. We're going, I'm going to define some terms, the main terms. Then I'm going to tell you about uh, what the immersive framework for TESOL is. And we're all going to take our time to present some examples in different biomes. Here is a definition, a very common one that you've probably come across on Wikipedia. It's a, the metaverse is a hypothetical iteration of the internet as a single universal immersive virtual world that's facilitated by the use of virtual reality and augmented reality headsets. 
In colloquial usage, the metaverse is a network of 3D virtual worlds focused on social connection. Let's go and see to what extent this applies. Here is an image of what we see as the metaverse. Uh, as it has been developing and as you know for your for um, our geography lessons at school we divide the universe into different layers including biosphere and biome uh, the ecosystem and the communities and the populations and the individuals that live in them so what is our biome uh, we've been working on kitely Spatial IO, Minecraft, Verbella, and um, Second Life, Open Simulator, Spoke, Agora, InWorld, Frame, Engage, OpenAI, and DALI, and some other um, destinations in the metaverse, uh, which we're going to present uh, in um, sequence. This is the syllabus, let's say, these are the areas, the metaverse biomes that we explored during the EVO 2023 session, which we called immersive learning experiences in the metaverse. Each of the moderators um, was working in a particular immersive environment. And you can see on the left, all those um, <clears throat> environments that uh, the each one of us was dealing with this year. So before I tell you more details about our EVO session, let me explain. Uh, let me explain what we consider. I'm sorry, I should have done this right from the start. Um, sorry. What we consider as the characteristics um, that apply in the metaverse and uh, what the learner journey involves. Well, one of the main characteristics is interoperability, which means taking out the value creating in one platform into another one with full transferability of data and assets. And decentralization refers to ownership of these assets and also the use of blockchain technologies. Spatiality is about uh, interacting with digital items that are searchable and findable. Persistency is connected with uh, always on, this feature of being always on, that you can uh, take on and off all your assets and the environment you're working with. Um, another characteristic of the metaverse is that it's obviously, as you can see, community driven. There is a lot of us that have started using it. And uh, that involves sociability and social experience. Also, the metaverse has got self-sovereignty of identity, reputation, personal, private, persistent, it's portable, it's protected, attributable, it's not hacked. These features may not all apply at the moment, but it seems that it's all uh, going to this direction. And here is our educational framework for TESOL in the metaverse. The art of immersion is the main feature. Uh, it combines situated, experiential, transformative learning in biomes. It provides safe, immersive learning, haptic experiences, but not always haptic. It doesn't have to involve a lot of expensive technology. It enhances the learner journey. It, in, it focuses on learning to learn and development, um, also teaching future ready strategies to our learners. Creativity, it's based around creativity, leveraging affordances in engaging environments and simulations. It's about integrating multi-sensory interactions, implementing task-based methodologies, synchronously, asynchronously, blended, exclusively in world, incorporating transmediality features for narratology, enhancing learner collaboration, autonomy, hudagogy, motivational learning, strengthening our TESOL community, adopting gamified learning processes, global simulations, found fiction, inverse immersive scenarios, role plays, quests, treasure hunts, achieving exponential 
language acquisition through authentic language instances. Here are some images I have taken from my project with my students. Uh, at the moment, we're working on sustainability education around the United Nations 17 uh, SDG goals. And um, I think we should not forget the six learnings framework by German in 2009. Um, they uh, suggest that it, that learning is based on the nature, on the actual nature of learning in virtual worlds, which is to promote uh, exploring, collaborating, being, building, championing, expressing, immersive in other worlds. Uh, the projects involve different destinations in the metaverse, as you can see, um, for sustainability in uh, transportation, um, tourism, cultural issues, immersive Alice even, uh, Alice in Wonderland. And uh, we also use chat box, chat bot, sorry, which we incorporate in Kitely in Ilti Treasure Island, which is an island I have with my students. So over to our experience about immersive learning experiences in the metaverse, we had approximately 100 participants, 10 moderators, two guest speakers, we used Canvas, PB Works, Wiki, and we had so many learning experiences in the metaverse through quests, hypergreeding, island hopping, creating, immersing. We spent two hours, two, sorry, sessions a week, and all the recordings and our progress uh, are available on our Canvas system. And here are some outcomes uh, from our participants. Junji, who worked in um, uh, Mozilla Hubs and spoke, he created this fabulous 3D train uh, from 3D video. And Rosemary, she built this together with the help of uh, moderators and myself um, in uh, Kitely, Adjunation. Also, we had a lot of um, participants working on Blender to export to Kitely and Spatial. Yeah, they produce 3D. Um, they actually uploaded 3D images um, into Kitely. Also, Frame VR, some uh, of our participants um, uploaded their own work and they learned how to create learning experiences for their learners. Um, I'm going to uh, pass the floor to Heike Philp. This is some bibliography. It's quite basic and you're probably familiar with it already. And um, I would like to thank you. Um, <laughs> over to Heike. Heike, are you ready? Thank you very much, Helena, and uh, thank you very much for summarizing the wonderful results of the EVO sessions. EVO is actually a five-week workshop in January that we run every year in the framework of the TESOL um, um, well, organization. It's the TESOL conference, it's the TESOL, it's an American-based English teacher organization, and uh, it's the largest one on this planet. So thank you very much. And would you like me to, to present my own slides, Helena? Or because I've just got it here, so I might as well share it. Yes, you can uh, share your screen now, Heike. Sure. So and um, um, I'd like to take you on another journey, which is the uh, the one of an EO funded project that I'm involved in since last year. And uh, it's one of those uh, EU funded projects that I helped to co-initiate. And we've in the past, we've spent time in OpenSim and Minecraft. And this, this time it's only Minecraft. And I'd like to mention that uh, it's all based on, like we have several project partners in Europe and it's the, um, uh, the Italians, the Finnish, the Finnish are project coordinators. We have Norway, we have Germany involved. And it's all about getting la language learners who speak, in this case, another language than English. Well, it's the CLIL methodology is involved in the uh, project name. 
And CLIL means that subjects like STEM are being taught in schools in Europe in English and also in other foreign languages. That's called CLIL order. And we've been trying to explore <clears throat> the sustainable future aspect of uh, uh, in biomes like Minecraft. And so there's been some encouraging first results of school projects that uh, a French school and a Finnish school have actually joined together. And I wanted to present that <clears throat> when kids are being challenged to produce. In this case, it was um, the sustainable goals uh, two and three, which is the um, two is um, zero hunger and three is uh, health and, and well-being. And so the kids were presented with challenges like an old ruin, which they turned into a beautiful hospital. Uh, they created water collectors. They created a sustainable home, <clears throat> basically a green area in biomes like they were uh, unpleasant for living. And they expressed their um, creativity in creating media, 3D printers. It was absolutely wonderful. And the um, created an, an, a gym area as well for um, getting fit. That is fantastic. So the results that the kids presented here is just absolutely stunning. And we were so impressed by the, uh, by the productivity and the creativity of these first results. So this is my part from presenting the year funded projects and I'm happy to pass over to Amani. Uh, thanks, Haika. It's, uh, it's always, oh, I'm gonna share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's always a pleasure to work with the EVO team uh, Haika is my role model, and uh, I, I love working with Helena and Doris and the rest of the team. I joined the team in 2021, and it was really a great honor. I used to be a trainee, and then I joined. Um, I wear different hats in the VR world, so I'm an instructional designer and also a VR developer. And um, it was really a great honor this year to uh, present to um, VR uh, platforms, um, uh, Frame and um, and Engage. And so um, Frame is really a, a powerful uh, platform that allows users to create immersive virtual experiences with the, uh, so with Frame VR, uh, teachers and educators and students can delve into a world of creativity. And so my role was to teach, uh, was to introduce Frame um, and um, uh, to show how uh, educators uh, can um, can delve into a world of creativity by utilizing 3D models, text, audio, and other interactive elements. And so, um, and they can combine these elements and they can construct vir virtual environments uh, that, um, that can be really engaging and motivating to students. And, um, this is one of the frames that I um, I usually use as an example, and uh, it we always talk in VR about empathy and how to make people uh, step in the, sh the shoes of others, and this relates to one of the greatest novels by Henrik Ebsen. He's a Norwegian uh, novelist, and uh, I created that in VR, and um, uh, you step into the shoes of uh, of uh, um of, of helen and um and you see what she was what she was suffering from uh the next um platform is engage and um uh, i'm a big fan of engage and i feel like this is the second home after alt, alt space vr and um uh, what you're seeing now is one of the um the the it's the 360 uh, virtual environment uh, that I took uh, the the educators uh, there, and uh, actually Doris, she's the one who uh, suggested uh, this uh, um, 360 environment. It's uh, in Venezuela, and it was breathtaking. It was very beautiful. You were on, you were above like th 300 feet above uh, sea level, and you were going high, highly up, and it was really immersive. 
uh, really enjoyable and you can imagine taking your students into this environment and what makes um, engage XR unique is that um, you all of uh, all of the like uh, the teacher and the, the students can be in the same environment and then they can discuss what they see uh, so it was really a great experience and actually a discovery for me because I've been using engage and I didn't see this uh, VR environment well, it was really breathtaking um, one of the things that I love about VR is co-creation and co-building because it really uh, encourages students uh, like or te actually when teachers they they create they, these learning experiences they're actually thinking of Bloom's taxonomy's higher order uh, thinking skills uh, so create analyze evaluate and so um, engage XR is is really a platform that leverages many experiences and interaction uh, so here uh, students can write I mean writing of course is, is difficult in VR but the, but they can actually write they can draw they can use sticky notes uh, they can interact with lessons and um, and other uh, other activities um, so this is <laughs> I pass it over to Doris mm, okay good night everybody uh, mm, okay uh, Elena can you share my slides or or should I do that? I don't have a problem with that. Uh, you can share if you want. Okay. Sorry. Let me get there. Okay. It's loading. There. So, um, AI and immersive worlds. So, this is what I try to, we try to integrate when we worked on this specific activity. By leveraging AI in the design of virtual worlds experiences for language learners, educators can create personalized, interactive, and data-driven learning environments. AI empowers educators to understand learners' needs, provide timely feedback, adapt the learning experience, and enhance the overall effectiveness and engagement of language learning within virtual worlds. For this particular experience, we use ChatGPT to help us design a quest for participants to navigate education, EduNation, that's uh, our send, uh, headquarters in uh, Kitely, and learn about the work of dedicated virtual world educators and their practices. So, uh, okay. Um, oh my. Oh, sorry. I'm having trouble here. Okay. The use of quests in virtual worlds effectively engage players, immerse them in the game, ad uh, advances narratives, and provides clear objectives. In our project, participants were fully engaged and immersed in the story of saving a donation, where educators had to locate dragon eggs to restore its magic. The dragon eggs were strategically placed in different areas, allowing participants to experience a wide range of effective language learning tasks, including language quests, role-playing scenarios, uh, immersion environments, language puzzles and games, collaborative language tasks, and cultural exploration. These tasks provided uh, participants with valuable opportunities for contextualized language practice, interactive communication, vocabulary and grammar development, as well as cultural understanding. This approach enhanced the gameplay experience and facilitated meaningful learning, uh, language learning. So these are some of the uh, scenarios and games and storytelling settings that we have in a donation. So we, when we designed the quest, uh, the participants had to visit the different places so they had the chance to see how uh, educators can design and set uh, tasks for uh, students. Um, 
AI art in the language class. This was another uh, of our task. Um, test to image technology enhances language learning by providing visual representations that support comprehension, engagement, and retention. It generates images based on test, helping learners understand vocabulary, grammar, and context. Uh, test to image foster creativity. Active participation is particularly beneficial for visual or kinesthetic, uh, kinesthetic learners, for example. By participating in the Electronic Village Online Sessions 2023, we had the opportunity to create our AI-generated art exhibit in the browser-based uh, virtual world of Spatial. Uh, we invite you to, to visit and see the work of my students. This is a project that we work uh, when, uh, you know, Stable Diffusion just started. So we got the idea of um, using language to, to create images. In this project, AI-generated images were used in a unique way to enhance language learning. Instead of simply describing images, the students were challenged to think creatively and construct unique images through their descriptions. This required critical thinking and effective use of language to communicate their intended descriptions. As AI-generated images may not always be perfect, a student has to refine the prompts to achieve the desired representation. This provides a meaningful application of language skills and allows the students to see the outcome of their words. Subsequently, an art exhibit showcasing the students' work was created in Second Life, providing an opportunity for others to visit and appreciate their creation. Um, building upon previous experiences of creating art through writing, my students and I had the opportunity to participate in the Virtual World Best Practices in Education 23 conference. This is a, a conference that happens in Second Life every year. We collaborated on an exhibit focusing on the importance of protecting rainforest and addressing climate change as a topic for language learning and raising awareness in our in our class. To deepen our understanding, we watched videos and read about the benefits of rainforest conservation, as well as uh, threats they face, uh, the threats that they face, uh, the forest face, and their impact on our survival. ChatGPT assisted us by providing stories and fun facts about the rainforest, enriching our knowledge. We also focus on expanding our vocabulary and exploring ways to contribute to the preservation of rainforests. Using virtual spaces, learners and educators created avatars to enter the gallery and engage in discussion about the artwork. This interactive approach to appreciating art offer students a unique and immersed language learning experience. This was really important for us and meaningful because my students live in a place where they have the rainforest in the backyard. So for them, it was a discovery because they were living there and they didn't know uh, how important it was. So this was an experience that was really meaningful and I'm very proud of what they produce. We, uh, we have all this information in our paddles where you can read their reflections and how they got to the to portray those uh, images in there and, and the meaning of those images in the uh, that they have the chance to exhibit. OK, so thank you very much. I think uh, um, this is my contribution to it. Thank you for listening. Thank Could you. So much. you could you show us the next slide too, Doris, once you've got, um, okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much. That's a really um, fabulous presentation and thank you so much for sharing.